So on this quick update video, um, I've now uh, had the chassis out and given it a good de-dust and clean it. And it's certainly looking a lot better. Um, I have even started to change some capacitors, but more on that a little bit later on. Um, obviously, as I, I did explain in, in the first two videos, I wasn't sure how we were going to get on uh, for getting parts, if it, for whatever I needed, if I did need anything or hadn't got it. But I just thought I'd show you, it's looking a bit cleaner um, internally now, and I've even I've even wiped all the sooty mess. If it was amazing, the tube, obviously at some point the tube will come out and have a good clean if, if the set is further restorable, or you know I, I can get a picture up on it and uh, get it working. But I've just cleaned um, round where the, um, uh, you know, EHT goes into the tube there because, you, as I explained before, you can, I'm sure all you television buffs know anyway, you can get some arcing there. I, um, I, I did have it on an Echo. I When I first started doing televisions, I, I did an Echo, um, a 1950s Echo, and um, obviously that runs on higher um, EHT. And I did get some arcing all around that because of the... Um, horrible grunge and dirt and um, so I've cleaned all that and it's looking a lot better and the chassis as I say, is aluminium um, the RF side has gone uh, a little bit rusty there but you know I don't think it's going to affect too much and um, so I don't I don't I'm not one of these people to take strip it all down take everything off and um, and then painstakingly clean it all and um that's great you know if that's if that's your thing and that's what you like doing like, there's nothing against it i think i think there's many ways you can um do any restoration whether it's a car a television a radio what, whatever you're doing um you know you do it how you want to do it don't you and i think that's probably the best way um as i've explained to me this is more about I wouldn't call it a, a restoration even it's trying to make the set work again that's what we're after here so yeah there we go um it's been de-dusted and the chassis comes in and out dead easy on this set it's got nice plugs that you pull out um obviously that comes off the tube and there's a plug inside down there with the wires and obviously this the eht lead comes off there and then it's dead easy to slide the chassis in and out quickly um I think this television set has had quite a lot of, you know, it was used quite well in its day. And I think at some point, not recently since I've had it, but some point in its storage, I think it was found, I'm right in telling you, somebody found this one locally. It's a local set. Um, it was found in a loft. And as you can see, I've been, I've been slowly um, changing the many wax capacitors, which hopefully you'll see there at the back of the soldering iron. Um, uh, if you just zoom in, that's what I've changed so far. All those, are, are, you know, are, are purely life expired and will be hopeless. Um, doing this a little bit different. Normally, I like to try and get what I call first light on a set. That's get something, some sort of uh, raster on the picture tube before I start changing a lot of capacitors within the set because I think you can introduce an awful lot of faults by crossing wires, crossing capacitors, putting them in the wrong place you might not think you've done it but we've all done it, we've all been there and done that but in this instance unfortunately the um, the mains dropper resistor got two mains dropper resistor because this this is this is a british set of say of 1951 it was designed for use on both ac and dc so it has dropper resistors um in it which i'll probably show you more in another video because unfortunately they as you often find with the age they had got like the green spot and the resistance wire, they're just resistance wire round like, wound round like an earthenware tube, um, which makes different resistant values. And the, resist the resistance wire had rotted and they were totally hopeless. So then obviously you can't just go out and buy replacements. 
you have to find something you know um as near as possible and i think i have found something um but i've had to order that and um, i'm waiting for that to come in and so obviously rather than uh do nothing i've carried on changing a few capacitors in the sh in the set to keep to keep it going onwards so i still don't know whether we're going to get a picture on this or or what sort of picture we're going to get i notice also down here these are the big um smoothing ca capacitors the electrolytics uh, in this can here um they are shot as well as you might be expected um so i've got to rig something up to change those which i've got i think i can do that i've got enough here without having to order it because obviously ordering things is getting quite difficult at the moment from from various places an interesting point that um how to how do you data set how do you know as i, I know this set was released I, I believe this set was released in uh, 1950 or thereabouts and I don't know if I hold that there whether you'll see that how whether but but on on some of the electrolytic capacitors um, I hope you probably can see that uh, they are dated and that one clearly dates as August 1951 it says August 51 if you can't see that um, so that's always a good way to have a look at your electrolytic capacitors when you when you take them out or when you just look in at a set and it's a rough idea of the date you, you can roughly see i mean you can see all these down here are original um you know they've never been changed and so you know you've got a good idea then of when your set was made because televisions weren't just made over one year you know probably i don't know how many years this pi fv1 was made but it could have been made from 1950 to 1953 it could have gone on i, I don't think it went on a lot further than that actually because it was so televisions were very much like and, and still today i suppose are like that they're very much like computers you know today they soon got superseded by a better set by better circuitry by better picture tubes uh, more you know um, bigger sets bigger picture tubes were coming in and so obviously they were soon very much soon uh, out of date um, so sets weren't kept in production that many years uh, like this from from this era anyway right I am going to apply power as they say so there we are. We'll just just turn the, the variac up a little bit. Just just applying the um, first little bit of voltage, um, and I mean I think with these we won't see if anything's working really till, till we're up to very nearly round about 200 volts. I think AC obviously, um, but we'll, we've, there's nothing untoward happening anyway at the moment. So we'll, we'll turn it up another stage. I'm not, um, I'm not putting any signal into the set. I haven't got my uh, lines converter set up. I'm not putting any signal into the set as yet. I think it's far too early. This is purely to see if we're going to get anything um, upon the screen. I mean, what I would like to see is a, some kind of raster, which is just a for those perhaps who are watching this who aren't familiar with vintage televisions just a fuzzy screen you know a light fuzzy screen as though the screen is lit up and it's a bit sort of fuzzy it might have lines going across it as well that's what that's what we're really looking for um so we'll turn we'll turn the variac up a little bit more again we are getting we are getting closer now to to the um 200 volt mark on that um but you have to remember, uh, a valve television is not like uh, a modern television there again. You know, the valve heaters have to heat up in the chain and um, that can all take a long while. Ah, I can hear, I'll stop on that story because I can hear a little bit of line whistle coming through there. Don't know if you can hear that. So that, that's, that's a good sign. We'll turn the variac up the last little stage. So that's full power now. That's getting full UK mains power. 
I can see that the tube heater is lit um, so that's a good sign um, that shows the heater chain is working um, theoretically we hope oh wow I can we we, 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 we have we actually we actually have um, incredibly we have a raster on the screen amazingly so there is life <laughs> there is life in the set um, that's incredible um, so obviously now I know the set I can't believe that <laughs> there you go um, it, it uh, normally they don't do that um, but there's a lot there's a long way to go yet um, that is just as I say a basic lit screen um, there's a lot of flicker I can see and a lot of lines um, I have another camera set up looking at the screen so I can see and I, I will try and inter space that into this video so you can see um, the two angles there um, but yeah that, that, that's really quite positive and um, that gives me hope that we might be able to you know move this on and now sort of get a signal going through there and see if we see if we can get the the test card up on it eventually but there we go yeah so that that's progress in itself and um i hope i hope you've enjoyed watching this little uh, series on this television and um we should be coming back i'm sure you know as we progress um I, i'm never in any rush to restore something it's when i have the time and inkling to do it so you know but um yeah that's, that's that's really good i'm really pleased with that so um as always thanks for watching and please do come back to see any progress on this and um we'll have a bash now and see if we can get some sort of positive identifiable picture up on the screen rather than just the um lines and lit screen so um please do subscribe if you like this channel or want to come back or comment if you've got one of these or you know you know anything about this pi uh fv1 model i'd love to know about it and um but yeah thanks for watching as always and bye for now